Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Are you ready to accelerate your business and accelerate it in a way that you have less stress, more joy, more positive energy floating around you and your clients? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. My guest is Anne Carden, and she is going to help us using her expert in you method. So we're going to talk about pricing, we're going to talk about bringing in more revenue, and we're going to talk about doing so in an easier way, faster way, so that you have less stress and more joy. Without further ado, Anne, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you, Robin. It is so great to be here with you again. Um, I had you on my podcast, so I am excited to be with you again. Yes, it's awesome. We uh, we had a great conversation on your show, and listeners... Anne's show is the Expert in You podcast, and she has really great guests, but she also is just a wealth of information. She's a serial entrepreneur, and she has built her own very successful businesses and helps really serious professional entrepreneurs build businesses from 500K to multi-million dollars. And we are going to learn so much from her today because she's absolutely brilliant in her space. But Anne, I'm going to ask you to tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today. Sure. Thank you so much for asking. Well, I was in corporate for, thir- I went the corporate route and I was in corporate for 13 years in retail management, managing multi million dollar departments in a multi billion dollar retail organization. And I left that when I had kids. And we moved to the country outside of a small town from California back to Missouri. And um, I left my corporate income. We also left a vehicle because when my husband, left his job. He gave back a company vehicle. So we, I, here I am out in the country with one vehicle and everything that we had saved and went into the move and to buy a home in the country. There was no opportunity. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I wanted to raise my kids. I felt called to do that, except financially, the numbers, the math just did not work. And we found ourselves really struggling financially to keep a roof over our head and food on the table. And it felt like my husband was driving back and forth to the city. So everything that he was making was literally keeping a roof over our head, heat, food. I I made everything from scratch. My husband hunted for me. So that should tell, I mean, I didn't have money to buy meat at the grocery store. We, it was like my kids got hand-me-downs from their cousins. I couldn't buy them clothes. I'd never been in that place before. And it was the hardest thing because we were, I was worried every day if we were going to lose our home or if we were going to be able to pay our bills. And so I started looking for, I, I, I sat down one day when my four-year-old son needed to choose and he didn't get the hand-me-downs that he needed. And I cried because I didn't have the money. And I said, I have to do something to help my family. But there wasn't a lot of opportunity to work. We had one vehicle. I still would have had to find daycare. I mean, there, just the circumstances just were not, um, you know, this was 32 years ago. So we didn't have the internet. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have ways to make money. So the craft industry was exploding across the country at that time. And there was a little craft store in our small town. And I was, I've always been very creative and I've always loved crafting things and all of that. And I thought, I wonder if I can just take this box of stuff and turn it into something. It was worth about $15. I made some things up, took them to a little store. And after two weeks, nothing had sold. So I said to her, what's selling? And she said, these rabbit dolls. And I said, I have no idea how to make a rabbit doll, but I created my own design. Long story short, that grew into a global business and I was running a manufacturing company out of my home and I had employed several other moms. They were coming in and out of my home. I was shipping all over the world. I was in stores all over the world. They even ended up on the cover of an international magazine. And then I went into the pattern side and I was creating my own designs and selling to pattern companies. And anyways, after seven years, I sold that. So I, ch- I changed my family's life, first of all, through business and just really staying with it. And so that's, you know, being resilient and and being resourceful. Um, So that was my first business. And then I sold that to, I sold out my designs out to a pattern company. And then I started my second business, which was in fitness. And I ended up 
buying or ended up building two health clubs, two weight loss centers. And then I sold all of those. So I've sold five businesses and I got into coaching because I worked with a business coach in my last two businesses when I was having a challenge with something and it was so impactful and it changed my life. And I said, where have you been for 32 years? Like, I, I wish I would have had you. And it was, it just made such a difference that I just said, oh my gosh, I want to help people. And I just went on this, I mean, a mission to learn everything I could about business and marketing and sales. And, and I started realizing I was already networking and speaking on stages and doing all of that. And I realized a lot of the business owners, a lot of the small business owners didn't have the knowledge that I had acquired and I started helping them. And when I saw the results, I that I could get people. I, I just knew that was my next thing. So that's how I came into the coaching space. And that's been almost 13 years. So at first I've worked in over 60 industries with hundreds and hundreds of business owners, entrepreneurs, everything from a plumbing company to an auto repair shop to now mainly I work in the professional space. So almost, I still have some small business clients that have been with me for years, but um, for the most part, I work with coaches, consultants, and professional entrepreneurs to really grow a high-end premium business. So that is my main model today. That was that was probably a long-winded answer, but... I love it though, because I think it shows that no matter where you are in life, there's always opportunity if you're willing to step into it. And yes. sometimes it's, you know, like you said, you were called to be a stay-at-home mom. And when you go from that place of six figures plus, and all of a sudden you're at home with kids and you are worried about money. I mean, I, I did very this I had a very short stint as, you know, a stay at home mom, but I was, I was consulting the whole entire time. Right. But I wanted to be hands-on. I didn't want somebody else to raise my kids. Exactly. But it's hard to go from having that corporate security with yes. all the benefits and everything to not having that. And being, I think you're like me and probably a lot of the listeners where you're, you're a driven person. And when you're a driven person, your mind still needs stimulation. You still need to feel like you're contributing. You're, you know, being a protective member of society. And we are that raising our children, but it's still there's a little more that some of us need. Right. I did find that I, I, I did find that I kind of fell into, I, it wasn't like a full blown depression or anything, but I did struggle with that because I've, I have worked since I was a kid. Like I've yeah. always made my own money. I've, I've always, I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur, but my first business was when I was seven. I sold craft classes to the neighborhood kids in my basement and they paid me. I don't know if it was like a, nickel or a quarter I don't remember anymore but I had never and then I always sold things throughout my whole life and you know to make money and anything I ever wanted I had to go make my own money and so I learned all those skills even as a kid but I never thought I it actually came out on a podcast somebody said well did you do things like this as a kid and I went oh my gosh I did I did yeah <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that but yeah. there is always opportunity if a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old can make money anyone can do it. And we didn't even have the things we have today, which is just crazy, the technology and everything that we have. So yeah, um, well, that's yeah. a whole nother story, how you got into stores and everything else, but we're not going to go there today. We're going to talk no, we about, need to go there. <laughs> right. We're going to talk about your expert and you method. Yes. And I, I'm on your email list and I love your emails listeners. I, I highly encourage you to subscribe to her email list because Thank it's, you. there's so much value in her emails. And she always like, gives me almost a kick in the pants to, to keep going and to do more. But <laughs> let's talk about that. And I think there's four steps in your method. So yes. let's, let's dive into it. Yeah. So I have a, my expert in you method is the, the first thing is redesign your revenue model. Most people do not have a revenue model that can really help them hit their big goals. So I teach a top-down approach, and that means you're going to go after your highest thing first. That's what you're going to become known for. And then if somebody can't buy your high thing, you're going to downsell. Most people teach an upsell method. I teach a downsell method. So that is completely different. So most people teach sell something low and then ascend people up. 
That's harder. That's a harder model. Wouldn't you rather go out and sell the $10,000 or the $25,000 thing and then sell the $1,000 thing if they can't afford that or they can't buy that? So that's the first thing. So I, I know most people in my industry do not teach that. And I actually learned that many, many years ago in my second business. I learned that high ticket method. And when I, it's interesting when I came into the coaching and consulting space, I was taught the other way. And it wasn't until I just kept hitting a wall with my revenue and kept hitting a wall with everything I was doing that I said, this isn't working. I, I need a better way. And I took a step back and I started looking at all the things I had already had done in other people's businesses and things that I had done for myself. And I'm like, well, that's the problem. I'm trying to sell low to high. I need to be selling high to low. So redesign your revenue model. And you need one core offer that you become known for so that you're positioned as an expert and an authority for that thing. And when you do that, you will now, you will put yourself in a premium category. Um, there's a difference between a Lamborghini and a cheap used car, right? What comes up in your mind when you see Lamborghini or you hear the word Lamborghini? What comes up in your mind when you talk about a cheap used car? Like there's a visual even that goes uh -huh. with that. Well, the same thing happens with your offers and with what you're selling. So if what you're selling doesn't sound like it's very high value, you're not going to get premium prices. And if you're trying to sell a $7 book and then try to get people to go to a $50,000 sale, it's not going to happen. Um, I can only think of one time that's happened where somebody bought my book, but he, he actually heard me on a podcast. Then he went and bought my book and then he became a, a $40,000 plus client. So normally that that just doesn't, it, it's a hard road. I'll just say yes. that's a hard model. So. Yes. So redesign your revenue model so that the sales are easier, but you're also making great money with your offers, with what you are selling. This is why people get into cash flow problems because they don't do this, or they're trying to sell something very low and then they try to run ads and, or it's exhausting. You need so many people to make any kind of money. And, uh -huh. but if you can sell something again for $10,000 cash, put that in your bank account, now you've got some cash flow to actually ramp things up and grow your business. So that's the model. Um, so most of my clients, anywhere from $10,000 to $100,000 or more are, is the range that we play in. So that's where I try to move them to. If they know what they're doing, if they have expertise, they just don't know how to do it. So mm -hmm. that opportunity is there. So I always look at, okay, how can we basically three to 10 times your fees? That's the first thing. And then how can we build your whole revenue model around that? And what are the different levels and the different layers that we can put into that? So you don't just have one thing you're selling, but you're only selling yourself one way. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is now, if you're leveling up your business, you also have to revamp your marketing. So what worked for you to get to probably your first six figures will never work to get you into multiple six figures because it's going to take a different level of marketing. Everything has to elevate. So your brand has to elevate, your message has to elevate, your target audience has to elevate um, if you want the simpler road. So, you know, you can have, if you think about this, you can have a million dollar business with 20 $50,000 clients, 20 clients. That's very different from people needing hundreds or thousands of dollars or hundreds of or thousands of clients. So you have to revamp your marketing to look like the Lamborghini and not the cheap used car and to attract the Lamborghini clients and not the cheap used car clients. So mm -hmm. all of that becomes part of it. The other thing in ramping up and, and, and revamping your marketing is I teach scalable speaking strategies. So speaking is one of, unless you're going to run paid ads, which definitely is a next step, but I teach people how to bring in premium clients through scalable speaking. And basically we're talking about being online, being virtual, but there's what most people don't realize is every strategy will not work for every client. If you're trying to get a high level CEO, for example, they are never going to come through a funnel. Forget it. It's not going to happen. And so you have to understand that about people. They're never even going to give up their email address. So they're not going to opt in for things. And so you have to understand how your clients buy, how they're attracted, how to get to them. And so I have a lot of people teach one way to market a business. I have multiple ways that I help my clients bring in these high-end clients. And we discover what is going to be the best strategy for you and for your business. And then when we get one working, like, so you're bringing in high-end clients like Clockwork, 
we can add on, on another one. So then you end up with this business where you've got clients coming from all different directions and different ways. And you never have to worry about where your next client's going to come from. So that's the revamp your marketing. Okay. What, so I have a, have a question. question. I do. You saw me, you saw me react to that. I did. Um, so my, my question to that is, do you have, um, like a favorite marketing channel that you recommend for those high end clients? This is where I hesitate to say anything because people will think, oh, if I go out and do that, like they'll think of It'll it, work. oh, that ta they think tactically. It isn't about the what, it's about the details in the what. And the how, yeah. Yes, and it's the how, and it's the details. I mean, I, here's a good example. A lot of my clients, because they're bringing in really high-end clients, they're able to do that through their podcast. Like I just closed $95,000 in in. in uh, from three hours of podcasting, three hours for my own business. And so I teach the strategy to my clients, but the, here's the thing. I, I podcasted for close to a year before, and I got nothing. I got zero because it's not just the podcasting. It's the strategy behind the podcasting yes. that makes the difference. And so I had to actually, I actually paid a mentor $30,000 to show me what was missing. And when he showed me, it was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, so it exploded my business. So so it that's why I hesitate to go, oh, if you podcast. No, it you there's more to it than that. Yeah. And sometimes we pull a couple of different strategies together. So for example, my podcast, I also will feed my virtual events through my podcast mm -hmm. with the right people. So now I've got two strategies that are working together. So one, I definitely can make sales, but then I can also pull them into virtual events and make sale, more sales there. So there's more to it than what people think. So yeah, that's why I say I, I hesitate to even answer that because people think it's that. It's uh -huh. that that makes it, it's not. There's there's just a lot. I am more. so, so glad you said that because I run into this with my clients. Well, I took this online course and they said this would work. And I'm like, I know. okay. But if you implement that, it's not going to work if that's all you do. There has to be a strategic component. And I think there are a lot of people who, at least from what I'm observing, there's a lot of people who walk into the entrepreneurial space or small business space and they think, oh, I'm just going to do what everybody else is doing. But it doesn't work that way. You it have doesn't. to have the strategy. And a lot of people aren't strategic thinkers because we've been, we're not taught that in school. Right. That's and right. so many of us in the entrepreneurial space came from a background that is not necessarily what we're doing, especially in the coach and consulting. Consulting right. is a little bit different because I think you typically consult within the same businesses that you come from, mm -hmm. but with coaching, it it's totally different. Right. Most it's often. Different. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm so glad you said that because like for me, strategy was always part of everything I did, but mm -hmm. having come from that pharmacy background, Everything right. was strategic. You know, everything yeah. was a flow chart. Like everything, yes. everything yes. was point A to point B to C mm -hmm. to get to Z. And I, so that strategy, the strategic thinking is so critical. And if you miss that step, you can't grow no matter what you're doing, no matter right. where you're marketing. Right. And the problem, this is a big problem with the industry. And this, this was a big pushback and why I wrote my book, my expert in you book. I was really pushing back with the industry because of the stuff that I was seeing go on in the industry with, okay, people that know how to market one way, they have a marketing strategy. I, I will just give you a perfect example. So um, we see it all over Facebook, for example, build a Facebook group and monetize the group. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. It is one way, but it isn't it's not building a business. And mm -hmm. that's the difference. If Facebook goes away and I was shut down on Facebook right before COVID, I was making a lot of money on Facebook, but it wasn't my only way to make money. And I, I still had a really good business, but I invested a lot of time and energy and worked with a coach, build a Facebook group, monetize that. And it was going really, really well. And then I got shut down and I lost everything, all years of building that up and, and everything. And if that would have been the only thing I was dependent on, I would have been out of business and back to zero. But I know how to go get clients and I know how to make money and I know how to build businesses. And so I'm never, a, I'm never a subject to a particular thing. 
I, because I, I understand the foundation and the strategy of business. And most people don't do this and they don't know. And that's why they chase shiny objects. And I invested in multiple, multiple programs that had missing pieces. Like I can remember my first $10,000 program I, I paid for when I first came online. And well, no, let me take it back. I remember I hired a, an online business coach and she said, what are you going to sell? And I wanted to come online, but I didn't know anything about online. And she said, what are you going to sell? I go, what do you mean? She goes, you have to have some sort of a program. I'm like, okay, I'll do some sort of a business breakthrough because I was working with small business owners at the time. So she had me for three months creating this webinar. She was running ads, you know, she did ads, all that, all that work for three months. I'm not out there marketing to get more clients. So what do you think happens? I'm focused on all of this. And then I end up with no clients. And I did that webinar, the day of the webinar comes and we had like 30 something people registered, which isn't a ton anyway, but I had one, I sold one $600 program and I had to get on the phone and I had to convince the guy to buy from me. He turned out to be a good client, but that was my first experience. The second one, I invested $10,000 into a program. I was told, yes, your Ideal clients are on Facebook. They are. Well, no, they had pages on Facebook, but they had employees running their pages. So the people that I was trying to reach were not on Facebook. And again, I found that out the hard way. And so I invested in a lot of things thinking that these online marketers knew more than I did when I should have trusted my gut. And so I, I literally have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into this industry to get to the process and the strategies that I have today. But, you know, again, there were missing pieces. Do a podcast. I did that for almost a year. Nothing. Zero. Right. There's missing pieces here. Why am I not converting these podcasts? Why? Why are people not not buying? And and I had to pay big money to to a coach. But was it worth it? Heck, yeah, it was worth every bit of that. So. But that is the problem with the industry. So I know I got a little worried there. I apologize, but. No, that's okay. Because you said something that is like really the foundation of my business. And that is building the foundation that yes. is not built on social media. And right. I, I, I'm a minority. Like people, yes. everywhere you look online, it's you have to be on Facebook. You have to build, build a Facebook group. You have to be on Instagram. You have to do this. And no, you don't. If you no, have- you if you have a marketing strategy that encompasses your own website, search engine optimization, mm -hmm. and things that you own, like an email list, like a podcast, you're creating cornerstone content that can live forever and reach the masses. That doesn't happen on social media, but yeah. you have to think strategically about, okay, if you're not going to be there, then how are you going to do this? And what platforms are going to be the best for you? And where are your soulmate clients? And that's where right. your comment of who are you marketing to? Are you marketing to the Lamborghini clients? Or are you marketing to the used car sales lot? You that's know, right. that's right. And it's really important to be able to identify that, but most people can't do that on their own. Right. Or we'd it, have everybody in the entrepreneurial space would be making millions of dollars. Exactly. And and here's the other piece of this too. People look at people look at a lot of the gurus and the things that they're doing. And, and so they're doing these volume methods. This is very typical in the coaching space. They're doing these volume methods. But what they do not realize is that these people have big teams. They're everywhere. They're omnipresent because they have big teams working for them. They have millions of dollars to pour behind their marketing and their help and their teams. And so if you think that you can go out and do that same thing, which is why I don't like the low value, the low mm -hmm. ticket tripwire strategy, because most people just end up broke and disappointed. Most of the clients that come to me have tried everything. They've tried everything. And when I look at what they are doing, the the tr what they have fallen into, and I fall into some of these traps too, mm -hmm. the traps that they have fallen into, the stuff they've bought into, they're not even working in their expertise. Mm -hmm. They're working in something that's so completely out there that they don't even know what they're doing. Um, and so they're never going to get premium fees like that. And they're, they're sold this bill of goods that, mm -hmm. you know, they can do this. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some people that are outliers, right? Um, yeah. There are, but for the most part, 
most people, I, I see into a lot of coaches and consultants businesses, let me tell you. And most of the people that a lot of the, I shouldn't say most, but a lot of the people that come to me have even been in their business for years mm -hmm. and they've never gotten beyond that low six figure. I call it a trap because you don't have the money to grow. It's barely enough to make an income by the time you invest, like by the time you buy the tools and the things that you need in your business, you don't have money to hire help. The six figure, everyone's out there teaching six figures, but it really truly is only a start. Like it's just scratching the surface. It's not really a business as much as it is an income. Mm -hmm. So a six figure business is about a $40,000 income by the time you pay taxes yeah. and you put back into your business. So that's the first like big myth that I want to like break down because if you're only thinking six figures, you're thinking way too small, way, mm -hmm. way too small, because you're not going to be sustainable at that. You're going to be grinding it out. You never get any time away from your business. You're always hustling. And that just isn't a model that I, I want to teach people. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And I love, I love, well, okay. So we, I think we got sidetracked because we, we only did. hit two so of the third four, one. right? So let's yep. go through the, yeah, let's go through the other two and then we can circle back. Yeah. So the third level is restructure your sales process. So this is where you asked, actually asked me to talk about this because it's a huge piece. So when, uh, first of all, there's three steps to a sales process. There's what happens before, what happens during, what happens after. So the before, if your marketing is doing the heavy lifting, then you want a process where you are qualifying people. That's really important. You don't want to be getting on the phone with everybody. You want to make sure that the people you're getting on the phone with and talking to are qualified prospects. They're ready to buy all of those things. So your marketing should be bringing you people that are practically 80 to 90% sold, first of all. Mm -hmm. Then you qualify them even further. And so that's the before. And then during the conversation, then the conversation, I always say, becomes as easy as having coffee with a friend because you have just brought in a really high, uh, a really eager buyer. So then it's a matter of, okay, let's see if we want to work together. Let's see how we can work together. Let's see what you need. So that's the before. And then the after is how fast do you onboard them and how, uh, how do you take the payments? And I want to talk about that piece, but then also what's your follow-up and all of that. So that's the after phase. So first you have to understand the three phases, but in the one mistake I see people make, and I had to learn this the hard way as well and take a step back and figure this out, is they are, let's say, for example, Robin, you're going to sell a $12,000 program for a year. You're going to, most people would take $1,000 a month, right? They'd break it up over 12 months and they would take 1000 a month or they'll sell something for 5000 and they'll break that up over six months. Well, I don't teach that method because that keeps you cash poor. It doesn't mm -hmm. give you any money to grow your business. So if you're getting $1,000 a month per client, you now need 10 clients to get to a hundred, you know, to get to 10 K and that is an exhausting way to build your business. So I teach two methods. Number one is either get more paid in fulls. So you're putting all that money in your bank account. So let's say you're bringing in a $25,000 client, one, and you get a paid in full. You can now, all of that money goes to your bank account. Now, you, now you've got money to do something right? You've got money to put back into your business. So that's the first thing is get more pay, pay in fulls. The second thing is to take a lot more money on the front end so that you're still getting big cash injections into your bank account. And then if you want to spread out and do any kind of payments on the back end, you can do that. The reason a lot of people are not taught to bring in paid in fulls is because and recurring revenue is great. Like who doesn't love it? But most people don't know how to manage their money. And so they know that if they bring in that paid in full, they're not going to have any money in month two, right? But if you know how to manage your money right and you understand how to how to do that, and then let's just say you even brought in one $25,000 client a month, one a month, every month they pay, you know, $25,000 hit your bank account with one client look what you have by the end of the year. And that's how yeah. easy it can be. And people don't think like this. Yeah. And I will say that when you, I used to only do paid in full. And then as my prices went up, I started offering a payment plan. Mm -hmm. But the key is that people will, if you don't have your right clients, people will then decide, oh, I'm not getting results fast enough or, I want to spend money on something else. And they may say, they if get you get very feedback, fighty. 
Yeah, yeah they, they get flighty them. and they may mm-hmm. give you feedback. And a lot of times it's because their mindset isn't where it needs to be. And that's where, right. you know, the the having a coach that can help with the mindset component is, is integral too with continuing, getting people to yes. continue to believe in the program and on the path because the action is the most critical thing. If they're not taking action with what you're teaching them, they're not going to get the results as fast as what you are promising, right? So that's right. It, it's a catch that's 22. Right. But so I, lo- thing- I love that you say that at least, at least at a minimum, bring in a bigger deposit and yeah. decrease the monthly payments. That's right. That's exactly right. So there's a lot of strategies out there. I have found those two strategies to work the best. Those yeah. two strategies alone have changed my life in my coaching and consulting business. And they've changed the lives of many other people. Like I had a client this week that just put $11,000 in her bank account um, because she used this strategy and that Mm -hmm. she'd never had even a month like that before we started working together. And so my clients are making big, big amounts of money a month if they're doing the work. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's always this process, right. To start ramping it up. It's the scale part. That's hard. It's like, I, I've had people go out um, and close a $50,000 client. They were one client. She was charging $3,500. And in a week she went out and closed, you know, I, I read, did everything with her, closed a $50,000 client that paid her cash. That's a very different business Mm -hmm. (laughs) than $3,500 clients that you're pouring ads into and and all of that. And and so these strategies are are so different, but people are not teaching them. And here's the, here's the interesting thing. The people making multi-millions of dollars, they're, they're willing to do payments because they've already got loads and loads of money, or a lot of them are doing paid fulls. Like you just, yeah. you go through a funding company and you do paid full. And I don't really care if that's not how you want to do it. Like if you want to be my client, that's how you do it. And quite yeah. honestly, we, I, I have almost, I've almost completely shifted my model to be that way. Yeah. And I'm teaching my, I teach my clients to do the same thing. It's, it's it makes it so much game. easier. It makes it, is. it so much easier on the back end. And there are incredible opportunities for funding. Even PayPal offers a no interest payment or a no interest exactly. plan for six months. Yes. For six yeah. months. So yeah. why not do that? Because if you're with a good coach who's going to get you results, your ROI is going to be there every Absolutely. single time. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, I well, am a firm believer in all of that. And, you know, when we're talking about mindset and we're talking about pricing and taking bigger payments and all of that, I believe a lot of people don't want to do it because they don't, they don't, they haven't, they're not really maybe building their business around where their expertise is. So now they're not confident. Like, oh, what if I take the money and then I can't deliver? Well, hello, you should already know you can deliver if you take on a client. That's the way I look at it. And so that's a problem. That's problem number one. But when you build your business around your expertise and what you're truly brilliant at doing, you don't have to worry about that. Like I know my stuff works. The only thing that might not work is a client (laughs) because they're not working, right? Right. But it's the action they take. Yes. And I am 100% confident in everything that I do and that I teach my clients. And the only time I would see somebody not get results is if they are not taking my guidance, if they are not doing the work or they're not implementing, that's the only reason things don't work. So do I feel bad about taking, um, a client and paying, you know, having them pay in full when I know that I'm giving them the path to seven figures, everything they could possibly want, everything that I, it's taken me years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in. I'm doing it for myself. I know it works, right? Yeah. 100%. So, yeah. So you have to yep. ship that. So then, okay. Then step number four is rev up your revenue. So once you now have the foundation working, your marketing system is working, um, your your closing sales, all of that, now how do you scale? Well, there's lots of ways to scale. And so how do you want to rev up that revenue? Like I have multiple income streams, but I'm only selling myself one way. So I partner with people. We have other, like I have a media company. I don't do any of that. It's a natural flow. If my clients want that, I feed that business. And I have a partner that does all of that. So you you have to look for ways to build your business that aren't dependent on you. And there's so many ways to do that. But how are you going to wrap up that revenue and keep going? Like we, it's it's limitless to what we can accomplish. And most people, true, they truly don't think big enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. That's true. You have to think big if you're going to achieve big. That's right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and this has been fabulous. I love your model. We are in Thank such you. alignment, which I knew that because when I was, you know, interviewed <laughs> on your show, we had such a great conversation. So I think this is our third time to actually sit together and, and yeah, talk. Because and we did kind of a pre-interview thing. Yeah. Yeah. So this, yeah. This so time. this is so fabulous. And I, I love spending time with you and getting to know more about you. So will you tell the listeners how they too can learn more about you and, and, yes. you know, join your community and be part of your world too? Yes. So um, you can, oh my gosh, I, I'm everywhere. So you can follow me on LinkedIn. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can connect with me on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. Um, I will say I'm not super, like it's not a big place for me. So, uh, but you can connect with me there. I have a YouTube channel that is full of, how, you know, how-to videos and things that will help you. Um, but you can go to annlcarden.com. There's an L in the middle of my name and you can, grab some free videos. You can grab workshops. There's free resources. Um, you can book a call there if you want to. So you'll have no uh, shortage of ways to find me. And I will put the link to your website in the show notes. So listeners, be sure and visit the show notes because everything will be that we discussed today will be summarized for you in detail. And there will also be links to other episodes that are applicable to the information we talked about today. So the opportunities for you to learn and make the decision to take that next step and invest in yourself and your business will be super easy for you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here. This was so great, such a great conversation. If you found it helpful, please be so kind as to leave a rating and review because that's how I am able to get such great guests like Anne on the show and more people find us. And if you know someone else who is working to build a business and right now they feel kind of trapped or they're struggling because they feel like they're constantly hustling and working all of the time, share this episode with them because there's so much here to help somebody learn and grow and do so in a much easier fashion than what they're probably already doing. So thanks again, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.